Hi, I've recently been compared to two famous psychics. One, Edgar Casey, and the other, Om Seti. And I consider these to be great compliments. They've come from two different people, and both comments, I think, are really, really lovely compliments. So it got me thinking, can I really be compared to these people? So I thought I'd better do some analysis to see if there is any commonality. So hence, I am doing that. So let's start with Edgar Casey. Having now read a lot more about him, I feel particularly honored to have been compared to him. But honestly, I don't think that I am in his league. Uh, so let's have a look at some of the similarities in background and, and stuff and the things that he dreamed about versus the things that I dreamed about. And just let's have a look and see if there is any common ground. So I'm going to start by looking at the background. Uh, it would take me many episodes to in detail look at the difference in dreams, his dreams versus my dreams. So as far as that's concerned, when it comes to Atlantis, I mean, I'm just going to um, skim it at this stage. Firstly, he was an American clairvoyant and I'm just a Kiwi accountant with weird dreams of a past life. And I seriously would never describe myself as having any kind of psychic powers, sadly. But um, it is said that he channeled his higher self while sleeping. And his higher self had access to the Akashic Records. The plaque that is in his honour, side where he lived for many years, refers to him as the sleeping prophet. And this is what it says. Edgar Casey, from 1877 to 1945, was internationally accepted as an extremely gifted psychic. A humble man, he never profited materially from his psychic ability, but used it to help to make manifest the love of God and man, operated his photographic studio and lived in this building from 1912 till 1923. Many psychic readings were done in this building during that time. Whereas I believe I simply remember a past life, a very long past life, but I don't have the ability to plug into my higher self, although I do believe in it conceptually. And I wish I could connect with the Akashic Records, but I can't. Casey was able to help people with his recommendations for healing. I wish I could help people, but I don't have that kind of talent. My only superpower is to be able to remember dreams clearly, which apparently is quite rare. I can remember my dreams, my past life regression dreams, as clearly as if they were just a memory of my current life. And these memories, they come to me in the dreams and then I just retain them like they are a normal memory. They don't just fade away. The things that we do have in common are Atlantis. Uh, even though I never heard it called Atlantis, to me it was Tantau, but uh, I have assumed that the place in my dreams was Atlantis. And we also have reincarnation and past lives in common, as well as dreams. And of course, ancient Egypt, where I've just been. Well, not the ancient part, the modern part, but looked at ancient Egypt objects. Edgar Casey was very religious. And it sounds like this created maybe a few internal conflicts for him, um, in his waking world at least. Uh, I'm not religious. I was born into a Christian family, but uh, due to me reading the Bible from cover to cover at a very early age, um, and then proceeding to ask a lot of questions at Sunday school, I actually got kicked out of church at the age of eight years old. 
my dreams, they taught me a massive amount about religion because uh, I have seen so many religions and gods just come and go in the lifespan that I had on my, in my previous life. And it can't help but affect you when you've seen that firsthand. And based on that, I can't help but essentially be an atheist. And yet I do believe there's more. Um, obviously, I have to believe there's more because I believe in past lives and I believe in reincarnation, so I must believe there is more. But just not in the context of, of gods and sacrificing things and worshipping things that are illogical. But I do believe in reincarnation, as I said, so I therefore do believe there is more. But I think that reincarnation and everything that goes with it, like the Akashic Records or other planes of existence, I think they'll eventually be explained scientifically. So, oh, does that make me a pseudo-scientist? Yeah, cool. <laughs> anyway, as for religion, I think people should have the right to believe whatever they want to believe, as long as they don't try and force their beliefs on someone else, then I think, good on you, believe what you want to believe. So back to Edgar Casey. Casey believed that his higher mind explored the Akashic records and the information came out in his dreams. Hence, he could access information about other people in ways that were very, very useful to them. But clearly, um, that doesn't apply to me. I, um, all I can access is my memories of a past life, which I think is great. I'm, I'm not complaining about that. But, um, you know, maybe those part, that past life is through the Akashic Records. I don't actually know. Um, and if it was, that would mean that I just had a restricted membership. <laughs> He's best known as the Sleeping Prophet. And trying to think of what I might be remembered or as if I were to be remembered, maybe I'd be the person who remembered Atlantis or um, the sleeping rememberer of Atlantis. I don't know. It's this pie in the sky. Anyway, I understand that he could see auras and he could also speak to angels. Um, I have on occasion seen auras, but I tend to write it off as being my imagination. Um, as for angels, hmm, I can't explain that. Uh, I wonder if it was his way of initially connecting emotionally with the Akashic Records, because apparently when he was talking to angels, he was quite young. And so it might have manifest, the, the way that he connected with the Akashic Records might have manifest that way. It seems that Casey must have had a few internal conflicts in his, in his earlier life, since his dreams often conflicted with his religion. I too have doubted myself in terms of my dreams. And I doubted myself for most of my life until I actually went to Egypt. And, um, and there I actually saw the proof that it's not in my imagination. I saw things that I could relate to in a different way to other people. And I, could, I found things that I shouldn't have known about and uh, that sort of thing. So I had my proof and it was really important for me personally to get that proof because I had had a lot of doubts about myself, you know, could it all have been my imagination? Could these dreams just have been in my mind? But now I don't think that at all. In fact, I think quite the opposite. I think there is something really important about my dreams and it's made me even more confident and it's made me more determined to communicate them and let everybody know about them. Because how can we ever 
learn from our past if our past is forgotten to us. As I said, um, I don't doubt myself anymore, but equally, I like life to be logical and I like things to be explainable, uh, which in the case of my dreams and those of Edgar Casey, they're not so easily explained. It's easier for me because they're real and I've got had personal proof, but for someone else to look at what I'm telling you, it's, it's not easy for me to explain or to, to even prove what I'm saying. If I could understand better the why and the, the how that I remember this past life and, and how Edgar Casey could dream the things that he dreamed and help people, it would be much easier to understand why, in fact, there are differences between his dreams and my dreams. And really, I need to have a look at those differences. Um, some of the things are quite contrary to what I have experienced in my dream regressions. For example, the five races that he said were all created at the same time in different parts of the world. This is completely different to, to what I have experienced in my dream regressions. What, what I was taught in my, when, I, when I did my studies in, in my dream regressions was the same, pretty much the same as evolution. There was a few changes. For example, a, a bit of time that humanity spent in the water. I guess that could be compared to the aquatic ape theory but um, it pretty much was evolution the way we know it now. And um, so the difference between that and what Edgar Casey says regarding the five races, it, it's very different to what I have experienced in, in my dream regressions. That's probably the biggest of the differences. Um, although I'm not totally sure about this, but I did see some comments that he may have believed in alien intervention in terms of the human race. Now, I'm not, I didn't really get into this in any great detail, so I'm not 100% sure on this. But um, in terms of aliens, uh, I think that it's logical to accept the existence of aliens in our universe, maybe in our galaxy, but to assume their intervention in the creation of humanity it goes beyond what I can believe, actually, and uh, it certainly differs from what I have experienced in my dream regressions. The only indication I've had in my dream regressions of a possible alien is um, from a comment made by Tehut, who he talked about a teacher that he called the Great One, and uh, that person was possibly not of this earth. Uh, I know that's all a bit vague, but that's the nearest thing that I have to an alien. So I'm sorry for those of you who really like the alien concept, but I don't have anything to offer you there. Uh, I do apologize. I do wish that I had seen aliens and things like that. It, it would have been kind of more interesting for me to talk to you about it, but uh, no. I'm sorry, I, I don't have anything like that. In terms of alien technology, you know, UFOs, or whatever it is that it's called, UAPs, uh, un Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, I think that's what they're called now. It's clear from the information released by the American government that these things actually do exist. But in my opinion, they are the ancient immortals. I know that's a big stretch, isn't it? Sounds like a big stretch. But the technology that I've seen in my dream regressions that are linked to the to perfectly normal human beings with advanced technology in the past would lead me to think that maybe it's just them that have stuck around and, and um, yeah, because they had kind of UFO style travel. And uh, I know that's, Another pretty big difference between what Edgar Casey says and my personal 
experiences of my dream regressions. So in terms of longevity and things that he said about the law of one and the children of Belial, um, I have very similar concepts. Some of the terminology is very different, but the concepts are identical. So the law of one could easily be um, a description of Uran and his laws because he was often referred to in a very similar sort of way in my dream regressions. And in terms of the children of Belal, um, well, the, the leader that uh, was really not as good as Uran, but not as bad as Jepe, was called Belar. So there's a parallel there. But honestly, the things that Edgar Casey says about the children of Belial really would apply to Jepe and the, his cronies because the parallel there is massive. And in fact, um, Belar of Kron was seriously a very nice human being. And uh, he uh, eventually reconciled with his father, Uran. And um, so massive parallels, but a few deviations from from the exact story, but there are a lot of similarities there. As for Atlantis, well, I think we've got a lot in common here. Uh, okay, there are some differences, but I think they're mostly minor or can be explained. Um, but I mean, it would take me a lot of work, possibly a whole book to actually do the comparison and say what aspects were similar and how differences can be explained. So I'm not gonna go there, but uh, you know, maybe one day, if people really, really wanted to know the differences, you know, there could be a book in it or, or, or even a few episodes, depending on, you know, what people were expecting. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, the place that I refer to as Atlantis was not called that in my dream regressions, but obviously it's very similar to the place described by Plato, but without the gods. I, I have a very strong suspicion that Plato added the gods in order to make the story more palatable to his audience. That's just my opinion. I didn't see any giants in any of my dream regressions, but there were some very tall basketball player sized individuals who lived in Atlantis. Technology that we had was vibrational technology, but I can understand how it could be interpreted as crystal based uh, because the properties of various stones and crystals were quite important in the technology that we had there. So how do I explain any differences that there are. Well, I'm not sure I can really explain the differences. I mean, there's the things that are the same and there's things that are so similar, they they could be explained. And then there's the, the complete differences, which I can't explain. But it's possible that the place that I recognize as Atlantis, which I call Tantau, was actually somewhere else because I never heard the word Atlantis used. Or maybe some of the information received by Casey um, from a psychic perspective may not have been as easily interpreted um, or may not have been interpreted a way as directly as I can interpret my dreams because I was literally there. So I see it I saw it from a very different perspective. I saw it from the first person, whereas he's looking at it from a very big perspective uh, through the Akashic Records. And so it's possible that that accounts for a lot of the differences. Um, but it would be so much easier, so much easier for me if everything matched perfectly. It would be just absolutely fantastic. And, and I could quite confidently say that you know, obviously that the information is all, all correct because what I've got is the same as what he's got, but it's not. So, hmm. And after all, he is a world famous 
psychic and I'm just an unknown retired accountant with weird dreams. So, uh, yeah, I don't really know what more to say about that. Um, but I am relieved to, to think that there is such a very large overlap between what he said about Atlantis and my dream regressions. And so even though it's far from a perfect match, there's enough of a match for me to feel, yeah, I'm onto something and um, yeah. Anyway, sometimes I've been tempted to think of, like, I can't be anything like someone like Edgar Casey. I can't, I, all I can do is, is say my dreams and you know, if there's differences then, you know, how can I possibly be right? But there's still a little voice in the back of my head saying, you are right, you are seeing it correctly. Um, and it pushes me to continue to do this. Um, it's funny, I've managed to ignore that little voice in the back of my head virtually all my life, um, got on with my career, got on with doing everything else, thought that I could just keep ignoring it. But now that I'm retired, no, I can't, re I can't, just can't ignore it anymore. So I'm going to keep on doing this and, you know, maybe it'll be helpful. Maybe it won't. I don't know, but uh, I feel compelled to do it. And uh, hopefully you find it interesting. And um, I'm hoping that maybe some of the things that I have to tell people will in some way help us from making the same mistakes that were made in the past. And um, yeah, hopefully. So getting back to Edgar Casey, wonderful compliment. And now that I've done the research, I do see how there is a lot of commonality um, and maybe it's um, just my ego that I actually really like the fact that I've been compared to him. But in, to be realistic, uh, it's just my dreams. I'm just telling you what I dream. Whereas he had real talent. Anyway, that's it from me. I've done the comparison and I will do another comparison after I've done some research on Om Seti, the English lady who went to live in Egypt and was able to tell the Egyptologists about things that she should not have known about. So I will do some research. I'm also working on my episode about my yellow uh, pyramid obelisk. Um, that I went in search of when I was in Egypt. But that's also a lot of work, so it might take me a while before I get that episode out as well. In the meantime, thank you for listening all the way through to the end, and if you've enjoyed it, you know, please make sure you have subscribed, won't you? Because there's lots more to come. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>